One of my favorite cover stories for CardioSource World News Interventions of the last year or so was on bioresorbable stents. These actually go back to about the 1990s. Well, there is, you know there are the new review topics of the week, one of the innovations in Jack, and one of those is coming up in the December 16th issue, and it is on the current status of bioresorbable scaffolds in the treatment of coronary artery disease, and it is a comprehensive review. And I'm with Dr., uh, Professor Dr. Christian Hamm, who is from the Kirchhoff Heart and Thorax Center, Bad Nauheim, or Nauheim in Medical Clinic in University of Gleason, and that's in Germany. And you're also the president of the German Cardiac Society, by the way. The moment, yeah. uh, let's talk about this because these are just fascinating. They, they do, they actually go back to the 1990s. I, I wasn't aware of that, that the whole idea of these scaffolds, they call them scaffolds, I guess, because they're more temporary than, than stent. But what happened that it didn't proceed from the 90s? Uh, I don't. I don't really know, but I know that from the very beginning, I, mean, I have lived through this all this history. I, when I started out doing interventional cardiology, we did not have stents at all, and then we had this metal stents, right. and uh, I was uh, there involved in designing uh, stents, and we always thought of something that disappears. You know, we didn't want to have metal, uh, and because we could not cope in the beginning before we had clopidogrel uh, with stent thrombosis, and uh, so we were thinking of. Uh, uh, resorbable stents a long time ago, but then the metal stents uh, have become so successful that I think many forgot about uh, the resorbable Well, we, we got the drug eluding stents, and they seemed very effective, much more so in many cases over a period of time, but then they started worrying about late events with the drug eluding stents. And so I think that's what prompted going back to, let's Absolutely. look at this whole yeah. scaffold disappearing routine. In your review, let's just take a look at where you think we are now. Uh, I think we are in the beginning of a new phase of interventional cardiology. I mean, the uh, uh, metal stents, the, the drug looting stents are fantastic today. The newest generation are fantastic. Uh, the uh, uh, rate of stent thrombosis is at the level of bare metal stents, so it's, it's perfect. But still, they do have disadvantages. And uh, of course, it always has been a dream, that dream slowly comes through, that we have something that disappears after some time. I don't know how is it. How would you like uh, to have some piece of metal for the in, in, inside? Full metal jacket. Full metal jacket for the rest of your life, or yeah. something that is, disappears after two years. It's, if it's only psychology, but it feels good. Yeah, the patient's undoubtedly going to be happy about it. Yeah. So where are we in terms of? their use. Can we trust these things at this point? Uh, as I said, we are in the very early phase. So uh, they are marketed already. There are two uh, uh, scaffolds. We don't call them stents anymore. We call them scaffolds now. Are marketed, uh, for example, in Germany and they are, are used to some degree, about 10 percent of the patients maybe, right. restricted to younger patients and some other indications. And, but we're still learning, and uh, still room for improvement, but they work. They have uh, the first scientific results, of, uh, first studies uh, show very good results, so it's rather promising, but there's still some uh, way to go. And I will predict that maybe in 10 years' time or 15 years' time, uh, the uh, interventional cardiologists will smile that we used uh, metal in, in the coronary arteries. I'm, I'm quite sure that this will, they, they will replace one day. There have been some optical coherence tomography studies that are looking at this, and they're, they're kind of questioning whether either it all disappears or there is something left behind and that's worrisome. Yeah, yeah. Does it worry you? Uh, it does worry a little bit. I mean, optical coherence is the gold standard of imaging in the moment. And uh, actually, uh, even after two years, some parts seem to be left. That has to be, as I said, we're on the beginning of the development, has to be solved. Uh, but in general, what we have seen in animal experiments and what we see in most patients is that they really uh, are not there anymore. Over the course of, I know it took about a year for, the, for you to put this paper together, for your people to put this paper together and to get it published. Because it's a moving target, you know. It, that's so what I was just <laughs> going to say. Yes. Over the course of time, things yes. change just while you were writing that. Yes, yeah, that makes it very difficult because uh, at least eight different scaffolds uh, coming, getting on the market and, and uh, they, are, they first come out as uh, with animal experiments and then, you know, first patient results. So, uh, I mean, you're always running behind. 
what are the questions that you still have in your mind in terms of that need to be answered? Uh, yes, I think something that's still worrying is stent thrombosis in the early phase. Uh, so far, um, what we know from uh, uh, randomized studies and uh, from uh, registries, we in Germany started a big registry which has now included more than 1,200 patients. Uh, we looked at this and it seems not to be such an issue. But still, I mean, uh, even uh, 0.5 or 1% of stent thrombosis is something that uh, uh, needs to be t targeted at. It's, it's still too high. So uh, the struts are too thick in the moment. There needs to be some improvement. And uh, so there's still room for improvement and flexibility is a major limitation at this stage. What about in the design? I mean, there have been a variety of different approaches. Uh, as you say, there's like two that are available. Is there one approach that you, you, you think is kind of leading the way at this point? At this point, it's polylactic acid. Uh, so uh, it's a sugar. So, uh, so uh, that seems to be uh, the best in the moment. But of course, there's some of the stents uh, uh, that have magnesium in it. And are based on magnesium, we'll see. Uh, how they turn out, they go into clinical routine, or not into clinical, they go into clinical trials now on the larger scale. So there's still options. We have to look at diff different options. But for the time being, I think polylactic acid is uh, the uh, compound to be used in these scaffolds. So what's your takeaway message after you finish reviewing this in this review of the week for JAG? What do you think is the take home message about these? It's a, f a fascinating area. And it's a very promising area. I, I see a lot of uh, startup, smaller companies, startup companies, bigger companies to be intensively, intensively working on this uh, issue. And uh, um, so the take home message is be prepared. Uh, uh, scaffolds, bioresorbable scaffolds will come. Another five years, how's the growth going to be? Is it exponential? Is it just going to be slow and steady? And at least. Uh, I can speak for Germany. Uh, I don't know about the US. Uh, one factor is the price in the moment. So it's, uh, it's about uh, five times as expensive as a very good uh, drug looting stent. So the price has to come down. The price will be, could be an issue, of course. Um, but otherwise, uh, why put in metal if uh, uh, something that uh, dissolves is... Uh, as, as good and you don't have this issue of late stent thrombosis you know after two or three years when the patient may have to undergo an operation you can even take off aspirin and everything and and there are some new devices some MRIs that you can now use even if you have stents in there but if it disappears you don't have to worry about that absolutely and also the CT scans uh, with the new generation of CTs, it's fantastic. Of course, uh, you don't have, there's nothing that uh, uh, is, uh, is in the way. And well, this is really a fascinating review of the week, and it is uh, in the December 16 issue of Jack. Please look for uh, Professor Christian Ham's group who have put together this great summary for Jack. For CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.